Happy Thursday, Facebook friends. Welcome back to Facebook. We are so happy to have you back here for another edition of Teacher Talk. I'm Angie Garza, Director of Professional Learning and Educational Services at RWE 47, serving Lee, Ogle, and Whiteside counties. And what a special treat we have for you today. Stacy and I are on location at Sauk Valley Community College, and the irony of, of our on-location broadcast for this morning is that we're going to be talking about college and career readiness. So what a better place to be than at a, our post-secondary institution here in Lee County, our great partner in this work. Um, so with that, I'm I'm saying hello, Miss Stacy. You have a wonderful background behind you here at the college. That's a great reminder of, uh, you know, all the academic uh, work that goes into career exploration and pathway work. Um, how are you this morning? Happy February and are, as, are you as excited about this conversation today as I am? Good morning, Angie. Yeah, full circle moment because I think in this very room a couple of years ago, we started some of this pathway conversations about the importance of um, giving kids an idea and experience um, about all the opportunities that are available to them when they leave the four walls of uh, their home high school. And so it's exciting to be back um, at SOC this morning um, and having that conversation about the Pathway Program. Um, it's, it's fulfilling to think of where we started and where we're at now. Um, and it's exciting to think about um, the future and the opportunities that are made available to these kids through this constant conversation. Um, so yeah, I'm excited and I'm ready to get this one going, Angie. So Stacy, you're right. We've been doing a lot of work with college and career readiness uh, conversations across our three county areas with our partnering uh, post-secondary institutions and our, our K-12 friends. Um, and we started really initially having conversations in earnest about education because we do know we have an education shortage. And that very quickly has blossomed into some other areas such as manufacturing, agriculture, health sciences, and and so many more um, opportunities for students to explore, get their feet wet um, with discovering who they want to be um, as they exit our K-12 institutions and head on to bigger and better things um, in their lives. And so we wanted today to, to really kind of, I think, be reflective, as you mentioned, um, about the journey that we've all taken and where, what this might look like um, as we as we think about our, our school districts, we're working very hard um, to provide these opportunities for students um, and families um, to think about what they want to do with their futures. So with that being said, we thought, who could we talk to in our three county area who's who's doing some really intensive, intentional work with this. And we, we do have um, over 12 partnering districts we're working with right now. And one of those districts is the Byron School District. And so we are so happy to welcome to Teacher Talk this morning, Amber Swanson, who is the College and Career Readiness Counselor for the district and is just doing some incredible things with pathway work. And I, I do want to offer this disclaimer, and I'm sure Amber's going to talk about it, but uh, their pathway journey started before um, all of our intensive work. And so we've been so happy to partner and come alongside and, and be supportive of that process. So Amber, thank you so much for being with us here this morning on Teacher Talk. And we can't wait to hear about all the wonderful things that are happening in Byron, thanks to all of your hard work and effort. Well, thank you so much for having me, Angie and Stacy. And I have to have a little disclaimer first and just say that it's not me, it is our teachers. You know, I think we have to have like a kind of a guidepost to kind of get all the pieces moving, but the teachers in the classrooms putting together all of these components is really the, the bread and butter and where it's really making an impact. So um, I've got a shout out to all of those, um, not only in our district, but in others that are putting really kind of changing the way they're doing things and changing the game and and really making our students more ready for their potential careers. So it's really exciting. Amber, I am so happy that you gave that shout out because it really does take a community to do this work. Um, our educators are working really hard. You're working really hard. Our students are working very hard. Um, and so uh, it's it's just kind of a shared lift for all of us to promote student success. But that being said, 
um, you are really spearheading these conversations within the district and um, working side by side. Some of our, our pathway navigators, uh, Shannon McDonald, um, works very closely with you. So, you know, as we start off our time this morning on Teacher Talk, I was wondering if you could just give us a little bit of insight about what your story is. Um, you know, how did you come to this role? Uh, why are you passionate about this work? And um, maybe a little bit about Byron School Districts and, um, you know, maybe what what led Byron to have these intensive, great conversations about college and career readiness. Okay, nice tea up there. I'm really, you, you motivated me just by the, the excitement. Um, okay, so I have been a school counselor for uh, oh, I, I, 14, 15 years. Um, I taught social studies before that. Um, in general, I've always had a passion for education personally. I, I even though I didn't know exactly where my career would take me, I knew I loved being in a school. Um, when I was in high school, I did a little teaching assistant thing with my high school government teacher. And I honestly ran copies and didn't do much productive things that would really teach me how to be a teacher, except I, I just loved the environment. And that little tiny experience as, you know, as haphazard as it was, um, I would probably, you know, it, it really did give me just a, a little bit of that confidence going into college with a, as an undecided major that like, I just know I like the setting. And then I, as, as you move through, you know, those student teaching experiences and whatnot, um, you know, I think any educator can, can see themselves doing multiple things, but most of the time we end up flocking to one set population that we really prefer, even if, um, you know, how you work with them changes. And I just personally have always flocked to that, um, that that 18 year old age group, because, you know, I think we can all look back on our own lives and go, man, there is not a more vulnerable time in our lives where we are supposed to be equipped. We're not equipped or we, you know, we could be better equipped. We think we know everything. We have a lot to learn. Um, it's just such an interesting position in, in life. And I don't think it's, it's just so it's oftentimes a crossroads for people. And so often, um, you know, I'll date myself here, but like when I filled out a college application, it was, I mean, it was mailed to me in the mail and I mailed it back. And we're also now dealing with a generation that has information at overload. And so, you know, the, the importance of having people in the right places for students at that crossroads is just so critical because it's impossible for, you know, people to sift through all of this information without human connection and trying to connect all their the pieces of strengths, interests, abilities, opportunities, job outcome. There's just so many components that um, I just think we have to have people um, there to, to, to helping students. And, you know, I think families and in tremendously important aspect of that as well. And so working with families as they're helping their children too, or their kids, um, is just really important. So um, I worked as a more traditional school counselor um, from 2009, sorry, 2009 until 2020. And then at that time, our district had put together a strategic planning team. And one of the number one things that came out of that was the, the community was asking for more college and career preparation opportunities. And uh, that's when they kind of carved out a position that would be a college and career specific position, which without that position, it is very hard for a district to move forward in a in a quick capacity, because there are so many other things that our, our energy is divided in so many other places, social, emotional learning, academics, test scores, um, you know, so, so many things that if if, if I wasn't provided just kind of the lens of, okay, college and career and, and opportunities, I'm, I'm here to create opportunities. That is a game changer for districts. And with that, if my district hadn't done that, we wouldn't have made the waves we had because you're just, there's just too many other things going on. So I'm happy to see that in the state of Illinois and surrounding states, that the push for having people at this and not just in huge districts. Now, I mean, Byron's a, a pretty small district. We've got about 470 students in the high school. So about 100, 120 per, per graduating class. You know, you would hear about a college and career counselor um, in, in the, sub, the suburbs or closer that direction. But it's the fact that we're now having this service in more rural districts is tremendous. And I think it's very important because we have 
as you know, we, we don't live near these huge metropolis cities, um, with the exception of maybe Rockford, but we have to work a little harder to create connections. So, um, I, so I've been in this position now, um, this would be my third year, um, as that being able to laser focus on it. And the pandemic was in the middle of that, but the shift was already happening. So I think what makes all change going on right now is we all have to, no matter what's going on in everybody's lives or school, we all have this like pre COVID post COVID, the way we see life. This trend was already moving though, in the, in the state and in education, I've been around long enough to remember the days where it felt like our, our main and only important evaluation point was your test score and how many things pushed uh, policies, just different practices. Um, and I'm not saying that test scores are not important, but it was such a singular focus that it seems like now we're in just such a great place as educators that we are really looking at the whole person in so many different ways. So Amber, something that caught my attention early on when you started um, speaking was that you said you were giving credit to the teachers. Um, I absolutely love that because something that we have learned quickly and then continue to push in this pathway work is that it really is a district culture. This idea of starting at a very, very young age, not putting pressure on, but just having that conversation. What do you want to do? What are you interested in? What do you not want to do? Where do you want to live? How do you want to work? So I love that. Um, we have found that some of our schools that are doing a great job with this pathway work, that's exactly what they have done. Um, it's It doesn't ride on the shoulders of just one person. Um, it really is the idea of a whole district uh, working together to push this. So with that being said, tell me about what the pathway program looks like in Byron schools and how did you get involved? As Angie had said earlier, Byron was already having having um, these conversations, doing the work. So how did you kind of partner with the ROE 47 Education Pathway Program? Um, Byron specifically, we're kind of in a little bit of a, a Bermuda Triangle here because our home community college is Rock Valley. So we have, you know, we, we partner with those folks up there and our um, education for, employ uh, for employment is also that uh, office that we get all of our grant funding is through CNC, which is towards that Rockford region. So we we initially were partnering with um, those two entities most to um, complete our grant goals and all of that. Um, so we had started, basically we, we took every class in our, in our building and we took every credential from every teacher. And we said, all right, here's what we're doing. How do we take what we're doing and make it make those opportunities more intentional with different levels um, to create those pathways and then how do we end in more dual credit so that's one one thing we did we found a lot of things that we were doing we just needed to tweak and we were able to turn into a dual credit course and that was mostly in part with our partnership with rock valley college just because they are ours um but at the same time the community colleges were doing that as well like highland approached us because our ag classes go through highland they were like, all right, let, let us help you. So it, the, the reach goes both ways. Um, so that was kind of one piece of it. What the ROE, with the partnership with the ROE kind of happened because I already was, we were kind of already doing it. I'm like, well, the ROE is offering all of this additional support. Let's look into that. And here's what that was able to do for us. That really just sort of put the puzzle pieces together because we had you know, this scattered piece, all these pieces were kind of scattered on the table. And then when we got involved with the ROE, the puzzle started to make sense because we had more intentionality from a 612 perspective. And that's been really critical because we started from the top, you know, those dual credit classes, but we weren't reaching into the middle school at all. We weren't um, super intentional with how that was going to look until we were able to have that guidance. And what the ROE, um, pathway assistance with our, um, uh, the, the name's going to escape me, our pathway navigators. What that's been able to do is help to pull in more stakeholders within our district. Because Stacey, as you said, it's not one person, it's creating a culture. And I, I think those navigators and our grant work with you guys has been pivotal in making and, and just widening the support network. So at this point, we have a you know six through twelve career exploration program going. With uh, we're going to be offering up to four endorsements 
um, after, well, we're working on up to four endorsement areas um, in, in progress. And then we're also just really, really increasing what we're doing for our middle school students. And that has been a huge tribute to our middle school teachers have really taken this they've taken ownership of the career exploration piece and they are running with it They're It's like, they can't go fast enough. They want more and more and they want more opportunities and they love that the impact that it's having on students. Amber, I was just going to say, we love happy accidents, but you know, we, we also like to talk a lot about in our work readiness. And so I think you were ready to, um, as, as a district, maybe kind of take a look at some of those puzzle pieces and, and start putting them together. And I, I love hearing about that middle school piece because as Stacy mentioned, this isn't just a um, this isn't just a thing, right? We're we're really working intentionally to build district culture, kindergarten through 12th grade. You yourself earlier, I loved it. I wrote it down, said, you know, as eight, our 18 year olds are at a very important crossroads um, in their life uh, to be making some really important decisions. And so waiting, waiting until they're seniors to kind of sit down and think about that is, is too late. And college as a, as a friend of mine used to say is a very expensive career exploration opportunity. So I'm, I want to come back to this middle school piece. Um, I am super excited to hear more about what that career awareness and exploration looks like at a younger age. Um, and you know, what, you mentioned that the, the teachers are on board and so excited about that. Well, what does that look like? How, what is that? How did you generate that excitement? Um, tell us more a little bit about starting those conversations earlier. Um, as, as simple as it sounds, we started with a book study. Um, there is a book from Amley, the um, it's a middle school. I'm not exactly sure what Amley stands for, but they produce a lot of education materials and it is a really small little book, but it's all about career exploration and at the middle school level specifically. So it talks about, it's, it's a guide for how to get your building moving. And my, our curriculum um, and instruction director, um, the middle school counselor and myself, we spent that first year in 2020 when we couldn't do a whole lot because of COVID, we spent it kind of as a, a little bit of a think tank. And we said, okay, we're not gonna be able to implement much right now, but what do we want to do when we can? From there, really the word exploration just really, you know, the, the, the cover of the book is like, you know, kind of an outer space look. So it's like, it, it really is the concept of exploring because I, I say this a lot um, to parents and students even, but career exploration is a nonlinear path. It never goes in, in one direction. It's a lot of bumpy roads. It's a lot of twists and turns. It's a lot of figuring out what you don't want to do. And that's the way it should be because there it's not like you are climbing a ladder and there's going to be this shiny apple at the top that you've made. It's going to be a whole lot of decisions, some happy accidents along the way potentially for students or overcoming challenges or getting into an anatomy class and realizing that's just super interesting and that, you know, you're geeking out about something because you're exposed to it for the first time. So um, at the middle school level in particular, we just really started implementing Zello lessons um, at the sixth grade level on this year. The other thing is we're taking advantage of what the ROE has put together with that uh, pathway playground this year. That was really great. We did an entire eighth grade career day out of that where part of us, we were at the ROE doing that amazing um, expo, but the rest of the day, this was really fun. We brought students from the high school who are towards the end of a pathway and they came back and had roundtable discussions with the high school students who were at, you know, our fire cadets, our students in our CNA program, so that before they're thinking about registration for classes in the spring, before they're thinking about any immediate decisions, we just had our students that were kind of at the end come in and talk to the students who were just interested in what might be available to them. So that was really, really fun. And then we take the seventh grade to a different um, expo. So every group has like one experience a year. The thing I'm the most excited to share about is um, kind of been my, this was kind of my brainchild. And then it's evolved as the year's gone on. But this year we've implemented something called Workforce Wednesday. And so I bring in an industry professional from some from an outside agency, mostly local community members. A lot of them are parents of our students. And 
first semester, we just did, did eighth grade, like they would come and eighth grade students could come and sign up to chat with whomever it was, um, an engineer, a nurse, and we had kind of switch up, you know, who it, who it would be each week, um, kind of give them, give them a good variety. And then they'd come over to the high school and have a chat with the high school students. Well, as first semester has gone on, I've realized that the value, the bread and butter of those conversations was happening at the middle school. So we're bringing that world in for them in a, you know, appropriate way to give them more ideas on what is possible. Um, so we actually included for second semester, we're pulling seventh grade into because I think that is, we just saw the value of those. I mean, I, I wish sometimes I could just be brought to tears a little bit with some of the, the pure excitement that these younger kids have and they're not afraid to ask questions they're not afraid to still think something's really awesome or you know kind of they're not too cool yet i guess i would say and not that high schoolers are but they're just in a different mindset they're more like how do i get this done versus i wonder what i could do and that is a beautiful place and developmentally that's appropriate to where a 12 through 14 year old student would be um just looking at what the possibilities are that's why the middle school is so important because if you can't if you if you miss that they've also they've lost a little bit of that relevance of why school is important anyway and if you're able to bring that to them in those challenging middle school years that relevance goes a long way to also help them with their purpose on a day-to-day -day basis it's been really heartwarming to see like what impact a little bit can do a little bit goes such a long way with that middle school group Amber, what about, um, can you think of one specific story um, or maybe an instance with a student where you have really seen the effects of that conversation starting, that career exploration conversation starting at the middle grades and going up to high school? Is there something that comes to mind, an instance with a student that you think, oh my gosh, they got it. And this is why this is so important to start having this conversation at the younger grades. Because we're... I I can't wait till we go and start registration in, for eighth grade students here in another six weeks because they will have had the opportunity to see like 17 different career people during the year during Workforce Wednesday. So I'm hoping that that light bulb moment, that aha moment comes at that point with the middle school. Um, but I do have a good example for jun our juniors right now. If I could just because we were a couple years ahead on the nine through 12, but we have one of our English levels every year does um, a research paper right after Christmas, and it's all based on a potential career. But um, a lot of times that would be the first time we would be diving in with those juniors. And a lot of they would hit that research paper and just go like, I, I don't I don't know. This is like, I don't want to think about this. Like I this is uncomfortable or, you know, I, just, you know, I'm not there yet. We're not seniors. Why do I have to worry about it? This year, when we just, so this is just fresh in my mind, when that teacher introduced that unit and almost every kid, it was not, I have no idea. It was like, well, yeah, I'm thinking about this or that, or I'm between these three. And so out of the 60 kids that we have in that section, there were very few students at all that were just like, I have no idea where to even start. They were already like, leaps and bounds ahead going, you know, I don't know it for sure. Cause that's not even the, the point is not for them to have absolute certainty. It's to have intentional direction. And so that can, I, I love when they're like, I'm thinking, you know, this or that, well, that you can do a lot with that because now you can plan a potential college program. Now, you know, kind of where you might want a job shadow or do those more intensive career exploration activities. So that would be the, probably the best example I can say is that our juniors weren't freaked out about that project. And our teacher was the one who noticed it and said, wow, I've never had a list this short of students who just didn't have a, a, any idea where to start. So, you know, I love your reflection that you can't wait to see what um, that registration piece looks like and watching those students grow as they continue to explore and, and build their knowledge and their skills and, and their future along that uh all the different pathways that you're working on in the Byron School District. So I, Amber, I just have to ask you, what's next for Byron School District? What, where do you anticipate growing? Um, what are those next steps uh, as you think about preparing students for what's next in their career? You want the long answer or the short answer? I'm going to say student focused. Uh, what's, what's next, what our biggest thing is we need a way 
we're gonna we're working on a way to capture this for students so um so that when they leave here they have kind of a record of okay i earned these credentials i've earned these dual credits there is no uniform system right now and we would like students to walk out and go okay that that's that was my college and career plan and then better than that let's build it from that beginning and say i want to be able to have two industry credentials and three dual credits so i think having a system um kind of like a college, like your high school transcript with your grades on it, but like a different way for them to have a tangible thing that they're walking out of. And the endorsements that are being, uh, that we're working with ISB and the ROE are going to be a, such an incredible piece of that. Because I would like every student to walk out with either AP courses, if they're going more of that direction and, and know that they have taken the rigor necessary for that next step, or an endorsement or certain credentials, that everybody has something. And I think more than anything, so a student can walk into the plumbers or pipe fitters and say, okay, um, I learned this trick from Paul Nolly up at Project First Rate that even if you you know want to go into a trade, but you have certifications in an un um uh like an unrelated area, that still helps for them a future employer to see that, okay, you got food handlers, like that's a that's a point for you kind of in their mind. And, and we just have to do a better job of, of helping helping them know all of those things. Um, in terms of programs though, I think we're just pushing those endorsements. We're gonna have at least three this year, a fourth the following year. Um, I'm just gonna keep going, see where else we can add them. The other thing would be the um, inclusion of those transitional courses that we have, because we don't want any student to leave here and not be prepared for what their next step is. So that means you got to hit things on all levels from the ones who struggle the most to the ones who are the most um, at the more accelerated rate. And, and also for them to feel empowered that what they did, what they took here, uh, what, like, what that does mean for them, um, that, that that next step is like the appropriate next step. Um, we are also, if I can just throw one thing out, um, so we've, we've had a lot of growth in health sciences. We have a CNA program. We're starting an EMT program next year in partnership with um, uh, OSF and um, our buyer and fire station. So that's going to be a new thing. We're expanding our business program to have more of a robust entrepreneurship program where they will be doing team-based challenges the entire the entire course, um, ending in like a community, like having mentors, community mentors with each group along the way, like a shark tank. Um, and then we, our pie in the sky goal is um, we have had a dormant engineering lab and we are working to partner with Constellation, our nuclear plant, to re-envision how we are going to offer engineering here. And that's going to be an entire overhaul because the needs of engineering is, um, well, the technology is changing. Um We've got a lot of students interested right now. We don't have a lot to offer them. So we are going to put together a new program, um, which is going to mean teacher recruitment as well in that area, which brings me to my final point. We have a lot of turnover in our CTE department. Um, and so that's going to be our biggest challenge is going to be replacing some of our teachers in these areas. We're building all these things, but we've got a lot of teachers that are going to be leaving and our education pathway is hopefully going to help to funnel some students back to us, but that's that's big. I mean, that's just really a, a challenge to all, all the regional areas. So uh, Amber, my heart is like racing. I feel like <laughs> when you were sharing everything that you were doing, I was like, I'm running, I'm running. I'm going to catch up with you. Um, I just am reflecting, you know, earlier you shared um, that we had that that moment during COVID where we're like, oh, okay, what well, we're gonna, you know, you mentioned that you sat down with the book and you just started had it, having some planning conversations and to hear that growth that you've had over the last several years. And now it feels like you're sprinting down the road and you've got a lot of great things um, in place as well as in the works down the road, running toward it. And so kudos to you and to the Byron School District for all of your work, all of your passion, all of your energy and commitment to the pathway programs and the pathway endorsement work, because I do know that it is going to pay dividends for your school and your community. Um, 
I love that idea of it coming full circle with using <laughs> that pathway education pathway endorsement program to um, you know replenish the educators within your school community. So again, congratulations and thank you so much for taking time out today to talk with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And thanks for all of your support. Absolutely. We are so um, happy, thrilled to be featuring you as one of our partners in our pathway endorsement work. Um, friends who are watching here on Facebook, I hope that you heard um, when Amber mentioned, you know, this is about growth. It's about empowerment and it's about building, building something. Um, and, and maybe it's it's something that we can't see. So we're, we're building opportunities. We're building culture, we're building students, we're building communities, and we're building futures. So this is wonderful work. We are so happy to have the opportunity to speak with you this morning here on Teacher Talk and are really looking forward to seeing what happens in the Byron School District and in the Byron community um, with all of your efforts and the efforts of your teachers and administrators and everybody who's at the table to make things possible for our students. Friends, that wraps us up here for another edition of Teacher Talk this fine Thursday. We hope that you have an amazing rest of your Thursday and even better Friday, a long, restful and relaxing weekend. And we will see you right back here next Thursday for another edition of Teacher Talk.